I'm VJ Karana. Welcome to My Australia, a show about people from overseas having Australian experiences. Coming up today, Suhasini spends the day on a farm, Gustav makes a YouTube video, and Tiara performs at a gay and lesbian community arts festival. Now, I grew up on a farm, but the only job I had was feeding the chickens and collecting the eggs. I certainly didn't know how to do some of the things Suhasini is about to learn. Let's take a look. My name is Suhasini. I come from Bangalore in India. As a child, I was very, uh, very shy. I hardly used to talk to anyone, even among my family. I would, they said I only spoke to my dad, mum and grandmother and no one else. I decided to come to Australia uh, because I finished my uh, bachelor's and uh, I was trying to, you know, look for work in the field of media. I live with uh, one friend. We share a two-bedroom uh, unit about 15 minutes away from the city. Sometimes on my way to work, I uh, stop at the park and uh, do some breathing exercises. Hi, James. Hi, Good. Currently, I'm working at um, uh, a market research uh, consultancy, so I do um, advertising research. What's still outstanding? Funnels. Funnels. Okay, right. I feel I'm a very friendly person, so I can make friends pretty easily. Uh, I found that in Australia, it's much easier to make friends. What did you do? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not married, like I'm a single person. It's, it's a big thing for an unmarried girl. I'm probably the first and only unmarried girl to have gone overseas to study before getting married. I have friends from uni, my friends I lived with before, friends at work. I go to a dance class, so I have friends from there. One, two. I mean, even though I was shy, I wanted to always perform, like on stage, uh, either dancing or acting. I joined this Bollywood dance class. It feels really, really good. I just enjoy myself dancing. I feel, you know, I can let go of everything. It's a form of expression as well. Sometimes I just feel like breaking out into a dance in the middle of nowhere, like on the, in a park or running around trees. It's really good. Hey! Hello, hello. hello how are you? Good. Welcome to Animal Land. <laughs> yeah, thank you. My name's Laurie. Laurie. This is my son, Nathan. Hi. And my daughter, Lauren. Lauren. I've never actually been to an Aussie farm, and so I'm really looking forward to um, uh, yeah, interacting with the animals. I'm really curious about uh, what farm life is actually like in Australia, um, how, how the people in the farm live, what, what challenges they face. I mean, uh, like in India, farmers face a lot of drought um, and, and lack of rain. I was always curious about how, like, you know, in India, all you see about Australia is cricket and how the cl cricket players are big and strong. So, so it was good to see all the animals uh, that are bred, the, the Angus cows, the meat that you get from them. And I got this advice from my dad, try to build a rapport with it first, pet it and... and uh, yeah, build a rapport and then hopefully it won't kick you. But he said this advice would work with Indian animals. I don't know about Australian animals, so you'll see if that happens here. Yeah. So you need to get two hands going at once. Another one on the front or two on the back? Cows are sacred in India, so, you know, I had to do a little prayer first. But milking was uh, easier than I thought. I was really scared that the cow would kick me or something, but it didn't, so it was good. OK, well, what we've got to go and do, we've got to go and bring those sheep in so you can go sheep. off with Nate. Yep. And if they start running towards you, go on! <laughs> run the other way, OK? OK. Make as much noise as you can. Cool. You sure you can handle it? Yeah, I'll do it. No, no. That's, what I, that's the spirit. <laughs> It's going to be a task. OK, here they come. Oh, 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 Oops. That's too loud, right? They're, they're pretty, they're running around all the time, so it's hard to pick one up. And, um, yeah, like, they kept running away from me, so I had to run around quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I did it. It might look cruel what we had Suasini doing today, putting a ring on the tails to take them off, but we need to do it to keep the blowflies away, especially this time of the year with a bit of moisture in the air. The blowflies, then they get what's called fly-blown. The cure is better than the disease, because if they um, get maggots in the, the back of their body, etc., they can get very sick. So that's why we put the, the ring on the tail. 
and we mark the, the rams because otherwise the meat goes off. If we don't take the testes out, the meat goes rank and then you can't sell it at market. And I know probably for Suasini, who's a vegetarian, that's probably pretty cruel, but for us as farmers, when we rely on the income, uh, you've got to supply what your customer wants. It was good to find out. I mean, it sounds really cruel, like, why would you want to do that? And, and I'm vegetarian especially, so, you know, cruelty to animals, it, it's a bit, um, yeah, not, not my street. Huh? <laughs> but, uh, no, no, I didn't find it very comfortable initially, but, uh, but yeah, once I found out it was for a good cause, it was good. Um, and yeah, like, it, it's good to just hold the animals, it, it just feels nice. I put a band around the testicles and the tail. And, and it's supposed to drop off after a while. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was hard trying to find the testicles and put them in. <laughs> Can you find it? Oh. Yeah, the, the mystery of the missing testicles. <laughs> <laughs> the mystery of them. <laughs> I, I tell you, I was very anxious with Suasini coming out, not being on a farm before. She was a bit, little bit tentative, but then she really got into it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. That's it. Now squeeze the trigger. Squeeze it. Difference how to tell the drakes from the, the ducks? No. You know what a drake is. <laughs> I've got a duck egg here. I can take it home and cook it. <laughs> a duck omelette. It looks like any other egg, but, but it was fun feeding the ducks. <laughs> so what time do you wake up normally in the morning? Oh, about seven. About seven. Well, you're going to be up at 5.30 every day. We're going to go and feed the sow. And while you're doing that, I might actually try and grab a piglet. OK, yeah. Jump out in a hurry. OK. Ooh. Yeah, there were, there were tiny pigs and there were big pigs. Some of the biggest pigs I've seen. Oh. Oh. Yeah, don't drop whatever you do. Got him? He's gonna, he's gonna wiggle. Oh, okay. Watch out, Mum's about to jump over the fence and give you a big kiss. Ah. You're right. You got it. Hold it. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, hold it. Got it. No, no, no. Got him? Uh, <laughs> I'm about as scared as you. You're a bit, a bit scared. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whose heart's beating more? Ah. Here you go, I'll take it here. Here you go. Well done. I was really scary because the mums and aunties were protective about their pigs. So when we picked up a piglet, they weren't very happy and they tried to jump at me and I was scared. But uh, that was a scary experience. <laughs> How was that, eh? Yeah, that was a scare. I'll tell you what. Yeah. You know, I thought you were going to jump that fence over there. Yeah, it was it was um, really good fun. It, it had its ups and downs. I, I did a lot of things today, uh, but but I did things that I've never done before. Oh, it was great. I, I was um, asking Laurie if he'll give me a job after this, so you know, hopefully I get the job. <laughs> I'd love to come back to a farm and yeah, spend time here definitely. What do I? It's hard working on a farm, but I reckon she's passed with flying colours. Now, if you're anything like me, you love having a laugh at funny videos on YouTube. My favourite is probably the dog on the skateboard. Let's join Gustav as he makes a YouTube video of his own. Hi, my name is Gustav Un, and I'm from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Well, there's mum and dad. And I have a younger brother, two years younger than me. His name is Hans. I live with my grandparents as well. Well, my grandma now. Every Friday and Saturday, our whole family comes over. All the uncles and all the kids. It's, yeah, it's a pretty big family. I have a dog. His name is Spike and he's an English Cocker Spaniel. I miss him a lot. Sometimes I tear up when I think of him. I'm staying at the, at the shared house. It's got six bedrooms. So, funny enough, all six of us are Malaysians. Four guys and two girls. And it's only 15 minutes away from the university, walking distance. I'm studying at, at Curtin University in Perth, Western Australia. I'm doing a mass comm degree in film and advertising. When I'm not studying, one of the things I like to do to relax would be badminton. Wednesday and Fridays, we go to the tab, the uni tavern. It's, it's really convenient, it's safe, and you know, everyone's, 
everyone there is a uni student, so yeah, it's a pretty comfortable, fun place to hang out. And of course, there is this one thing that, yeah, it, most Malaysians are familiar with, Dota. If you don't know what Dota is, find out. It's, uh, it's, it's short for Defense of the Ancients. It gets very emotional sometimes. Friendships are put to, to the test. Uh, yeah, and, and you just keep going back for more. Get him, get him, get him! I got this idea of Australia, that Australia was more open, was more appreciative of the arts, of creativity, which Malaysia really just isn't. And I thought, okay, if I'm going, if, well, I was in the performing arts scene. If I wanted to grow more, I would come to Australia. It'll give me more opportunities. I've always wanted to upload videos on YouTube, mainly because I have a hobby of acting and writing scripts, and YouTube gives me the chance to share my videos with the world. A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. You ever get annoyed by phrases like that? A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Uh, birds of a feather flock together. Recently, I've heard one that has just really annoyed me beyond the usual cliched sayings. Love is a feeling you feel when you feel like feeling a feeling you felt before. Oh, You know, it's just so... It, it's, it's something that people say uh, without thinking about. It's something that people take for granted. And I just thought it'd be funny to, you know, poke holes in that whole thing. Love is a feeling you feel when you get free stuff at the supermarket because it was wrongly priced. So this is Wee, and she'll be helping me out with, well, everything. She'll be saying some lines, operating the camera, thinking about how we're going to do the shot. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah, that's even better. Yeah, yeah. We studies mass comm too. We met her during, in one of my classes. Stand by. Action. Love is a feeling you feel when you're chilling out with your best friend in the whole wide world. <laughs> Love is the feeling you feel when you get the... Oh. Alright, let's just play it back, see if it's loud enough. Pretend, uh, mouth your words. Now try bobbing your head a bit more. Run, Sky Vermin! <laughs> All right, that's a wrap, that's a wrap. Good job, woo -hoo. I think the most important thing is to enjoy the whole process, which I did, so it was good. Yeah, I definitely want to gain a reputation on YouTube. I mean, as long as you keep things real, you um, put effort into your videos, and yeah, Sooner or later, you'll get a following and, yeah, it would just snowball, hopefully. Okay, so I'll just download all the files. Comes to 1.8 gigs. I play the guitar for fun. I'm not that good at it, but I'm good enough to uh, jam with friends and stuff. So, yeah, I guess being able to record my own guitar tracks and a bit of, you know, light strumming, background music, yeah, it's, it's a bonus. When you wake up hungover in the morning, the blanket over you. The editing is actually one of my favourite parts of making a video. It's, um, it's one of the parts where you have almost complete control over the circumstances. And of course, with YouTube, because most people will switch to another video if it's not interesting within the five, first five, ten seconds. I've got to make sure to put, you know, to make it quick and snappy. And it is done. All right. Right after it's uploaded, that's when you spam your friends' Facebook walls. You know, just tell them to spread it out to your friends and, yeah, abuse your friendships. <laughs> okay, so we've posted the video on YouTube. It was shot in HD, meaning you can view it in HD. Got the 
format right. Yep, okay. Right now, we'll just check. We'll just see how many views we got. Um, usually with videos like that, random videos, unless you've got subscribers or you've got a following, you don't get that many views. Most of the views come from, well, your friends and family. But if someone picks it up, like uh, College Humor, Fail Blog, Funny or Die, those are the websites. If one of those websites pick it up or if YouTube features your videos, your viewership skyrockets. It's been a tiring day. I didn't get that much sleep. But yeah, it's awesome to get something done and you know have it posted up on YouTube for everyone to see. Love is a feeling you <laughs> Love is a feeling you feel when you finally smack one of those annoying flies. There you go. And if you want to see Gustav's video, you can find a link on the My Australia website. After the break, Tiara performs a risque burlesque piece, and we ask some people about the riskiest thing they've ever done in public. Stick around. Hi guys, how's it going? I need to ask you something. What's the riskiest thing you guys have ever done? What about you? I uh, got a tattoo in Bangkok. What's the tattoo of? Um, well, it was a Thai phrase, so here, here, hence the risk of it not saying what I thought it said. <laughs> but I double-checked, so I think I think I got the meaning right. What was the phrase? Uh, sabai sabai, which is a Thai phrase, which I'm told means um, sort of don't worry, be happy, chill out, that sort of thing. Um, what about you? What's the riskiest thing? Uh, I was in schoolies in Byron, and uh, we thought it would be fun to light some fireworks in the nut in the nutty so that was pretty <laughs> hardcore you were nude lighting fireworks yep that's correct i just took off my clothes and ran around the street for you know for about 10 15 seconds and i came back inside as fast as i could that's about it <laughs> and what did your mates give you for that nothing it was just a dare. it was just a dare i've had a friend drive me off a cliff once that's good enough for me <laughs> just, uh, you had a friend drive you off a cliff yes um <laughs> why no reason at all it was dark, he didn't know that was the edge of the car park at the time, and yeah, that's how the story goes pretty much. Um, we were doing it for year 12, we did a big scavenger hunt for school, and um, we just had all these dares and we had to run through the supermarket in our undies. What, what did you get for doing that? Just points and we had to film it and it was a competition who could get the most points. The strangest thing I've done is that I, um, I played an African American girl and I'm obviously not African American. <laughs> I dressed up as a sailor boy, so I always had uh, black uh, leather sailor pants on and a sailor shirt and uh, HMAS Swifty, because my surname's Swift. So anyway, it was just a blast, it really was. I mean, you, So you were in a sailor suit on a motorbike yeah. at the Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras? Absolutely. Well, our next guest is keen on all kinds of performance, and she's about to do a burlesque piece at a Gay and Lesbian Arts Festival. Check it out. My name is Tiara Shafiq. I'm from Johor, the southern part of Malaysia. My parents migrated from Bangladesh. I was always a weird kid, I suppose. It was funny because I did start talking till I was about four, and then I never stopped. I loved reading. I read everything around the house. I got onto computers when I was two years old. I came here to do a degree in creative industries. And then after the degree ended, I started doing performing work and some opportunities came up. So I hung around and explored them further. Mark and I met in college. He is an Australian student. He came from Toowoomba. And we've been together about four years. We live right near the river, so there's a city cat, there's buses nearby. It's very convenient, very easy to get around. I do performance art and I incorporate things like burlesque and circus and physical theater and comedy, often to either relate personal stories about my life or things that I'm passionate about politically and socially. I've known I was queer since I was a teenager, but there wasn't a lot of resources you could go to find out more, especially in a country that's quite conservative. So when I came here, I was sort of trying to work that out for myself. 
at first I wasn't quite sure where to go. I was a little worried someone might tell on me or might cause trouble. But you know, slowly I found that you know, people here, firstly they respect your privacy, and secondly they're all really helpful and open. Uh, you know, the audition form. Mm -hmm. Like, if you could change any part of your body, what would you change? I co-host a radio show called Mega Hus, which is a feminist and woman rights uh, radio show. It's on a Brisbane community radio channel called 4 Triple Z. In Australia, there are more opportunities for women to really be confident and outspoken. I think it's just a lot freer for women to really be themselves. And because you see all these other women getting out there, taking on, you get inspired and you join them. I travel from Brisbane to Adelaide for the Feast Festival. It's a queer arts festival. Uh, music, visual art, performing arts, comedy. It's basically for queer performers and their allies to come together and show their talents. How you doing? Good, how are you? I did waffle back and forth between should I come to Adelaide, should I not? And I felt like if I didn't go, I would probably regret it. Are you a one-man band? Nah, you're in the band now. And I usually set aside a little bit of money every month for either like a class or a trip somewhere. And I've done trips to Sydney and Melbourne this, this year. And I thought, you know, why not? Go to Adelaide, give it a shot, see what happens. Underneath the arches, I dream my dreams away. Wait for it, don't go right now. <laughs> no, I've never busked before. You know, I've got lots of friends who do busking as well. And some of them do try to make a living out of it, so especially since it can be hard trying to get a job in the arts. In Brisbane, normally, I think you have to audition to get a busking license. Woo! Thank you very much, all right. But I thought, here, here's a space. You know, it's, it's kind of welcome to my sort of thing. And it's a, you know, it's a good, safer space to start off in. I'm an emerging performer. i am just started getting involved in performance and in festivals, and this is a good way for me to get more experience, get some ideas for my own work, and network and make new friends, uh, see what else the world has to offer. So I feel a little bit apprehensive, a little bit nervous. Five minutes just before the go on. I go like, oh my God, what am I doing? I am going to fail, and this will be totally horrible, especially with situations like this, it's not like there's an audience waiting for you. You just go there and you get whatever audience you get. And sometimes it can be a little bit of a downer when no one's really paying attention to you. Yeah, sometimes it, it can be scary, but once, you, once I get started, it, you, know, you just get with the flow. Like some people have told me, if you're not nervous, it's something not working. The nervousness helps just give you energy. I'm Tiara, the merch girl, hiding from behind this pole. I hope you can see me. I start off doing a dance piece. And it's just, you know, a bit of fun with a cane and a hat, prancing about, changing from one costume to another. It is a bit of silliness. A lot of the time, the more I perform it, the more it develops that way, because from, from performing it live, I get to see what bits work and what don't, and what bits suddenly happen. That hat is where you drop your dollar in afterwards. The next piece here is a piece dedicated to a girl I had a short and sweet thing with, I still miss her and I deal with heartbreak by making performance art out of it. I love performing. I just love getting on stage and doing something, whatever. So if there's a chance, I'll just go for it pretty much. People enjoy it. A lot of people tend, because it's basking, people tend to be half paying attention. You know, sometimes people just hear the music or hear me rambling, go, what is this woman doing? Yeah, but it's been interesting. I've had people come up to me and, you know, to ask me about what I'm doing and, oh, good on you for giving it a go. So it's been interesting. You know, it's taken me a long time to realise there was more to me than being foreign. You know, once it made such a big deal about being an other, being a minority. So this piece is about, you know, how, how do you tell, really, if someone is queer without the alternative lifestyle haircut? How would you know, really? I find that queer audiences tend to be more open and flexible to the sort of work that I do. I just sort of tend to do more out of the box type thing, stuff that's not necessarily very commercial, it's very mainstream. It is very open to different things. I think it's pretty amazing. I think it's really quite powerful when she started talking about being queer and being other and then redressing and then getting the burqa on. 
Uh, you know, all the controversy about the burqa and about people wearing veils or people wearing traditional outfits. Have you ever asked a woman out of the burqa what she feels about herself, what she's like? Do you even talk to them? So it's just my way of saying, just because they wear something outside doesn't mean you know anything about what happens inside. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you give me some money, drop a dollar in the hat, and I can afford a better CD player, and maybe some dance training while I'm at it. Total respect for her for getting yeah, herself totally. out there. Yeah, very gutsy. <laughs> Fantastic, you know, to get up and to uh, express yourself and, and whatever is inside to to let it be. And uh, that's, you know, I appreciate that. And it's lovely to, it's lovely to watch and lovely to, and, and that's actually very empowering for everyone, I think. Yeah the power of you know individuals performing and doing what's important to them expressing their having their own form of expression hallelujah go girls go woman <laughs> we want to see more of it it's yeah. fantastic seven dollars thirty cents all up but hey you know it's first time busking so not bad for like seven dollars in 20 minutes that's like <laughs> times three 21 dollars an hour not bad not bad some dogs don't even pay you that much, so. <laughs> well done, Tiara. And having done some busking myself, $7.30 is not bad at all. That's it for the show today. Here's what's coming up next week. Shobi has a go at Australia's national sport of cricket. Frankie goes dragon boat racing. And Xiao Xiao learns how to fly fish. See you then.